What are you wearing? What are those? What's on your feet? Where did you get those? Those look cool. Those don't look like they have much support. They look like slippers. We've heard it all. Whether you were the Vibram Five Fingers or this Vibram Furashiki, you're bound to hear comments like this on practically a daily basis. Does it bother me? No, not really. Do they regret asking as soon as I start going on a tangent about how much better minimalist footwear is for them than their normal shoes? Yes. What's up guys? My name is Jason, and this is an in-depth minimalist shoe review for the Vibram Furashiki. This specifically is the men's European 45, the UK 10.5 or 11, US 11.5 to 12, and in centimeters, 28. Uh, this is the olive color. Let's get into it. Before we get started, here is my foot specifications to hopefully help you judge if this shoe may be a good choice for you. As you can see here, I drew an outline around my feet and marked each foot's length, then the widest widths across the balls of my feet, as well as across my toes. The length of my left foot is 27.8 centimeters, which is slightly larger than my length of my right, which is 27.5 centimeters. The widths across the balls of my feet are also slightly different, my left being 12.1 centimeters and my right being 12.4 centimeters, and the width across my toes are very similar, left being 12.6 centimeters and the right being 12.5. Right away, you can tell the shoe's really unique. That's why there's a lot of rip-offs out there. So depending on what site you may be shopping for the shoe online, if you see a really good deal that's really nice and cheap, be careful because there's a very good chance it may be a counterfeit. Furoshiki is the art of traditional Japanese wrapping to generally carry clothes or gifts. Hence, why you'll hear this shoe sometimes being called Furoshiki, the wrapping soul. You simply slide your toes under this lip, then place your heel down onto the footbed, then wrap the sole around your foot to the opposite side heel, starting with the inside, then the outside, so that the Vibram logo is visible at the top layer. So simple, yet so fascinating. All right, so let's get into some details with the shoe. Vibram outsole there, nice and grippy. Velcro on the outside right and left. Cool pattern on the inside there. Details on the left and right here. Under the tongue, it gets to this lip where your toes are supposed to go. It's definitely not as stretchy here. And it leads to that narrowed toe box because your toes need to get in here and they can't get as wide. Grip here as well. comes with this bag for storage as well. On the bag, it comes with this little tab here. The way I end up putting these shoes in here is I don't necessarily put this on the Velcro as I've heard that the Velcro can be get quite weak on the shoe. So I usually just put them in the shoe like that. I'll fold them up each into each other so that the tip of the shoe is in the back of the heel like that. Then put them together and then squeeze them like this into the width part of the bag. You can see from taking them in and out of this bag repetitively, it is starting to get some wear and tear here on the inside. This shoe is comfortable on. I mean, you can see how stretchy it is. 
It's basically like wearing a sock or other stretchy clothing. If it moves when you move, it's generally going to feel pretty great. That being said, even if you do have a wide foot, you can see at the top here where there's that plastic piece. Even if you do have a wide foot, it will stretch more here, whereas this won't stretch that much. So it will narrow your toes into that narrow toe box still. Which, if I'm being honest, if I wear the shoes for hour a day, it will start to generally make my toes feel cramped. Not really in a painful way, more in a I just want to spread my toes out kind of way though. After I had these shoes and enjoyed them, I tried getting the boot version and although there was an issue of the incorrect size getting shipped to me, I didn't try them a second time because I could tell that even if I did have the correct size, the width would have been way too narrow for me as I couldn't even really get my foot in the 44-45 European or 9 to 10 USA, being their XL size already. They still had a slight stretch to them, but nowhere near the amount this one we're reviewing today has. That being said, if your foot is narrow enough for the boots, you'd probably love them, as they have a slightly thicker sole for colder weather, but still some basic flexibility. Anyways, my point being, these shoes are not made for wide feet. Just this specific shoe's stretchability slightly accommodates for them at least to the point where you probably would need to return it. I know there was a Vibram Furoshiki sneaker that appeared to have a wider looking toe box, but if I'm not mistaken, I do believe that was the older model with this being what they call a sleeker and more stylish fit, which is disappointing. This shoe is very close to being a near perfect minimalist shoe, but that tapered toe box sucks. One other major downfall, which seems to vary shoe to shoe, as I don't have much of an issue with it, but it's the Velcro system. Since they say that this shoe is safe in the washing machine, the repetitive washing of the shoe might really start to lose that Velcro capability to keep that tight fasten around your foot. Also, keep in mind that your foot can sometimes be a little too movable within the shoe. Depending how mobile you plan on being in this shoe, that may drive you crazy. This seems to get worse when wearing socks, by the way, if you choose to wear them with a shoe. Here are some specs as per the Vibram website. Since I got this shoe in July of 2019, I must say the tapered toe box has actually started bothering me more. Since I've had almost a year for my foot to start working more functionally, I need wider and wider shoes as everything starts to become more natural and splayed out correctly. So the tip of this shoe pulling my toes back to that normal pointed toe position I've been trying to stay away from really irritates my great toe. Ultimately, I believe it will depend what you plan on using this shoe for to get either satisfaction or disappointment out of it. If I won't be wearing it for hours a day, like while massaging for a few hours or stepping out of the house for a bit, I usually quite enjoy it. So, the two main reasons I would suggest the Furoshiki would be, one, you're new to this type of footwear and still have that shoe-shaped foot that goes to the taper. This would be an awesome first minimalist shoe to have. The other, being because this shoe is easy to pack away with a carry case and you can hang them from a backpack or belt loop or whatever, it's very easy to bring along when you want another pair of shoes to possibly change out of hiking shoes, or even as a main pair of shoes if you're out and about barefoot and need something to protect your feet from a hot sidewalk, for example. It's a shame Vibram admits on their website to bowing to the social standard of creating a sleek, stylish shoe forcing your toes to a point. This shoe has potential to be the coolest, subjectively best, minimalist shoe on the market with just a few refined changes. I'd love to see a system to get a wider toe box and maybe slightly stronger Velcro or another quick and easy fastening system. The slight moving around in the shoe doesn't bother me too much. So if you guys end up getting the Vibram Furoshiki, let me know in the comments if you agree with me or if you like the shoe more or less than I do. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this review helpful and I'll see you next time.